Hi, this is Brandon Slay from ThirstGym.com. Today we're talking about the inverse curl and how to use the West Side Barbell inverse curl. This is a great specialty piece of equipment. Um, they're not very common to find around in most training facilities. Um, they're probably one of the best hamstring based uh, machines and exercises that you can do. Uh, so to give you some brief background information, the hamstring is a two joint muscle. So it crosses the hip and it crosses the knee joint. Since it does that, we have to keep in mind that the way that it functions can be dependent upon how it's set up. So usually in athletics, we look at hip extension, hip extension, hip extension. So glutes and hamstrings help perform hip extension. Very important in running and jumping. However, the hamstring also crosses the knee joint, which does the flexion. So we also got to think that when we're running, our our leg is coming back and up towards our butt. So we feel that hamstring. So most people think, oh yeah, we're just gonna do a bunch of leg curls. Nothing wrong with leg curls, great for training the hamstring. Um, but what's nice about this is that we train the hamstring in a different position. So usually when you lay down, your body's pulling your foot towards your butt. In the inverse curl, it's the opposite. Your feet are anchored, okay? And now your hamstring is pulling your body towards your feet. Okay, a little bit different biomechanically there. Um, so usually a lying leg curl would be considered like an open chain movement because your feet are not pressed against anything. Here your feet are pressed against something. This would technically be considered a closed chain exercise. So a very unique exercise, especially from a biomechanic standpoint. So if you have access to one of these, I would definitely highly suggest you use it. You're not gonna find a better hamstring exercise probably out there outside of doing like RDLs and, and things like that. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you, but this part up here moves up and down based upon this is where our body's going to rest. I'm going to move this down just a little bit for demonstration purposes. Our weight goes down here and the, the weight is a counterbalance. So I'm roughly 145 pounds. I got 90 pounds on here. So that'd be like me performing 55 pounds. Our athletes and clients write down the weight they have loaded on here versus you know, doing all the math. Um, do you want to weigh yourself every day just to give an idea? As long as this weight is going down, you're making progress. Down here, we have our foot pad holders and our, our plate. These move up and down. I really like that about this. Westside really got this right, that you can really change this based upon the athlete um, and really get hunkered in there. And then there's some attachments to move it forward and back. So the key thing is, is to make sure that you get your knee joint lined up with this axis of rotation. If you're too far back, or you're too far forward, not only going to feel awkward, it's not going to give you a really good training effect. You need to make sure that your knee is right here in line with this axis of rotation. So I'm going to get up here and demonstrate this for you. Um, I'm going to make sure I got this in a good position. Okay. And this also moves. So the support pad up here moves. So if you've got somebody that's really strong, really good at this, you can train just one particular aspect of the range of motion to where I can have where this doesn't even kick in until I get so far and the rest happens from merely my own body weight strength. So we usually mainly use it to help the athlete get into position. And then we usually bring it back up to around the start point. So I mean, this thing can go all the way back if you really need all that, but I think that's a little too much for me personally. So what we do is we have our athletes hunker in, push their toes in hard, make sure their knees lined up with that axis of rotation. We're going to hold on to this underhand or hands can go by the side. I let the athlete pick. First time using it, most of them are going to hold on here because they're freaking out. They think they're going to eat shit. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to this, keep my toes in, make sure I've, I can feel my hamstrings, the elbow weight. I'm going to go down to control. we got to keep a straight line from head, shoulder, uh, pelvis and knee. We got to have a good straight line here, which is what's nice about having your arms straight because if your arms are straight, it's going to help reinforce that your whole body straight. You don't want to leave your butt behind. This pretty much defeats the purpose of the exercise. We need to keep our hip and knee and torso straight to get the most out of this exercise. So once I've done that, hips are forward, hamstrings are engaged, toes are pressed in, chest is tall. I like to have the chin tucked personally, that way we're not cranking through extension. Chin tucked, we're gonna go down. We gotta make sure we keep going. We gotta let our knees get completely straight. Completely straight. 
Okay, we can't keep them like this, completely straight, and then we're gonna curl as hard as we can back up to the top. Down, go. Down, go. And that's it. I know it looks really simple. Um, I've got quite a bit of weight on there to be able to aid me to help make the demonstration look pretty smooth. But once you start peeling some weight off this sucker and start really getting after it on this, um, this thing's humbling. It, it, it humiliates everybody that gets on it, and it's very challenging. So, the main thing to also understand is, is what's the difference between the inverse curl and the glue ham raise. So, the number one thing that you should keep in mind is that with a glue ham raise, your knee is not supported on the pad all the time. When you go down on the glue ham raise, either your knee's below it or it's able to move back and forth. Um, this, your knee becomes the pivot of rotation. Not necessarily the case with the glue ham raise. The other problem with the glue ham raise is many people cheat it. They do it wrong. They set it up here high at their waist and it, it looks like shit. It looks like garbage. To me, if you have an inverse curl, you, all, you might, as all, might as well almost ditch the glute ham raise unless if your glute ham raises look great. Um, I definitely know that that's something that we're kind of big on. We may always have our athletes do eccentric onlys on the glute ham raise and then we bring them over here when we want the full range of motion. Um, but we've had a tremendous amount of success with this exercise with our athletes in terms of building incredibly strong hamstrings. Um, and we've had n no hamstring tears in our facility in two years. Um, I firmly believe that some of that comes up from the exercises that we've done, but I also believe that adding this on here has been a huge benefit as well. And all of our athletes that run have seen tremendous success with their speed and their times uh, for track and field and cross country. When you're programming this, the sky's the limit. Um, you know, we're really big on fives and sixes when it comes down to building hamstring strength. Um, when we need to put some size on them, we go down to our eights and tens. And I've even had some athletes do 12 or 15 reps when we're trying to build up some endurance um, and some fatigue qualities in their hamstrings as well. I do firmly believe that if you have an athlete that runs um, competitively, I think this should probably be their best friend in terms of accessory work. You can phase it in and out. Um, but I try to keep my runners on this pretty much year round. I give them some breaks here and there from it. Um, but when we start getting into season, we jump on it hard and we really push it. So um, that's the West Side Barbell Inverse Curl, how to do it, um, some things you might consider. Like I said, it's really humbling. Um, if you got access to it, use one. If you don't, find somebody that's got one, give it a try. I think um, I put off purchasing one of these for a while, mainly because of the price tag, but I can tell you in hindsight, I should have got it earlier. So if you got any questions about the West Side Barbell Inverse Curl, how to perform the exercise, or if you happen to be in the area and want to come try the, the piece of equipment out, please feel free to do so. It would be my pleasure. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.